Sponsor, I'm the only one that gets to ask questions before she's done. How much does that cost? Well, yeah, it depends. Automatic. It depends because it depends on the wiring that you have in your home. You want to keep talking to the mic. Okay. Oh, sorry. It depends on the wiring that you have in your home, and it depends on what type of door you're going to use it at, what type of model that you buy. But it could run anywhere between five hundred and a couple of thousand dollars, depending upon um, the model that you choose. And then you have to add the installation for an electrician to come in and put it in. Okay. Did the battery go? Oops, sorry. So once you're in the door, if you're like me, where's the first place you run to? The bathroom. I always have to go. They say I have a kidney the size of a, or bladder the size of a lima bean. So what's the one number one bathroom modification? Everybody thinks it's the shower or the toilet. No, it's the door. Because as I said before, bathroom doors in older homes were 24, 24 six inches wide, maybe 28 if you were lucky. You're not going to be able to get an assisted device in there, a 24 inch door. Even turning sideways makes it kind of difficult. So the number one is a wider doorway. What's the number one thing overlooked? The flooring. You want to try to make sure that your bathroom has a slip resistant flooring. Ceramic tile is actually graded. And if you can look at the back of your tile at your tile distributor, it'll tell you the coefficient of friction, which is how they determine the slippage. And you want one 0.6 or greater to increase your, um, or decrease the amount of slippage that you have. Another one is vinyl, sheet tile, and tile. Vinyl has come a long way, it's vinyl. It's come a long way, it's no longer the vinyl that you see down here. This is vinyl composition tile. They come in a myriad of colors, and as I'll show you later, they come to look like wood floor and stone. Another wonderful product is a rubber floor. Quick, easy to clean. So once you do get in your bathroom, you get to your toilet, how difficult is that? Down and up. So these are some adaptive technologies. They cost anywhere between 
twenty, thirty dollars to like twelve hundred dollars for an electric model that'll actually lift you out of the off the toilet oh. and down, down and up. Oh. Or you can put it in a higher toilet, a fixture that's just a little bit higher that makes it easier. But what you want to be careful is you want to measure from the back of your ankle to your foot and take that measurement because that's relatively how high you want to have a toilet. So like my husband is six foot plus. He would like his toilet a little higher. I don't want to be sitting on a toilet dangling my feet. So we compromise somewhere in the middle. So what are some of the other things that you can do to your bathroom to enhance safety? Ever have any issues trying to flush that toilet? Sometimes there's so little inside the toilet. Well, they make flush extenders. They also make one you can use your foot. You press it and it'll flush your toilet. The other thing is I always encourage a nightlight in the bathroom. And if possible, a lighted pathway from your bedroom to your bathroom. Because in the night, oh, yeah. at 2 a.m., and you have to go, and the cat's in front of you, and you're going to trip over it, having a nightlight protects, it gives you a little bit more safety to know where you're going. So you need to wash your hands after you use the toilet. So what are some of the things you can do? This is a pedestal sink, so you can roll right up. This client was in a scooter, and she could roll right up and use her sink and transfer. The other way is through um, adapting your vanity so that you have space for your knees to roll up to. And you can put cabinets on either side for your towels and your sundries, but you'll have that space in the middle clear. So if you need to roll up to, or if you um, have, even have a cane, so you can get a little closer to your sink. Showers. We try really hard when we do an bathroom assessment to make sure that a shower can be installed. So much easier than trying to step over into a bathtub. And they make models that have a very low threshold. And this one runs about seven, eight hundred dollars plus the installation from the plumber. And then you have zero clearance ones, which are tiled all the way through. And they have drains here and here so the water doesn't come out into the kitchen. I mean into the bathroom, excuse me. Um, but they're a wonderful way. So you can roll in, you can have two people come into the shower. We did a shower for one client and she had MS and so she was in a scooter and her husband was not. And when we went to do the bathroom and we did a her side and a his side and she calls me up a couple of weeks after we do it, she goes, he uses my side. He never uses his side because he wants to sit down and shower himself and take the load off his legs. So some of the other things you can do is um, get one of those premier baths, I'm sure you've heard of them. Um, you, you step in, you close the door, and you fill the tub. I always think that you might get a little cold by doing that, so I try to recommend a shower when possible, but some people love to take baths, and that's one of the new adaptive technologies for it. Mm. Another thing is hand controls. Very important to have an anti-scald device so you don't burn yourself, because as, as we get older, our skin thins some. I know mine has. And hot water that used to not feel so hot to me now can burn you. So these are, this is a handheld, this is a volume control, and this is a temperature regulator that gets set to a certain temperature and when the water heats up, it only goes to that temperature. You can also buy some over-the-counter devices that have an anti scald device right in them, a faucet, a handheld, and things of that nature. So what are some of the other things to do if you have that bathtub and you really want to stay in that bathtub? These are called transfer benches and lifts. You sit here, you slide over, you use your, your, your tub. Here, you sit in and it lowers you. And they range in price again, depending on the make and model that you choose. A couple hundred dollars, probably closer to a thousand for the lift model. We're gonna talk about grab bars. Grab bars are my pet project. I think there should be a grab bar in every bathroom in America. These are ones that you can get over the counter. Um, they use suction. Um, I prefer the ones to put in that are actually into the studs of your wall. Because the thing about a grab bar is, I don't know if any of you have ever tested a grab bar. You need to look at two different things. A grab bar needs to be installed so that you can lift yourself up and grab when you fall. And when you fall, you put a lot more torque, it's called torque, on that grab bar. You pull it much harder. 
And if it gives way, you get a lot more hurt than you would if it doesn't. So there's a lot of misconceptions about grab bars. Some people say they're quick and easy to install. We can do it ourselves. And yes, maybe you can. If you use the manufacturer's grab bar with the manufacturer's um, installation device, make sure that you're in a stud. This grab bar for this bathroom was quick and easy. Maybe it took an hour to do. In that same bathroom, however, where the other one was going to go, it backed an elevator shaft for condominium. That's a concrete block. You can't put something into concrete block and make sure that it's going to stay. So we had to come up with some adaptive technologies. Then, whoops, sorry. Then we had to spackle and paint, and, and it took like three days to do because you had to wait for this to dry, sand, another spackle, dry, and then we painted the whole wall. So yes, yeah, some grab bars can be quick and easy, but others take a little bit more time and effort. Grab bars are ugly. That was what the consensus was for a very long period of time. They looked institutional. Nowadays, grab bars come in a variety. They come made to look like your stone. They come in a variety of finishes and a variety of places to put them. You can get one near your toilet paper. You can get one in your shower that goes around where your shower is. You can hold on. One in the corner, one for the soap. They're now everywhere. And that's why I believe they should also be in everyone's bathroom. All right, your bedroom. Uh, my daughter's bedroom looks like that on a daily basis. But again, she's young. Me, I go into that room, I'm like, how am I going to sleep here, Laura? I can't find the bed. So, what is the first modification you do on a bedroom? Again, a wider door. Because bedroom doors, like bathroom doors, were not made very wide in the day. This bedroom door was, is a very interesting concept. You know how you open a door, so you have to make sure you have that 36 inch clear opening so you can open a door? It becomes wasted space. So a pocket door, or what we call a trap door, the door is hung above the railing and it slides back and forth. So that way when it's open, you have your full space on both sides of that door. Bed. You want to be able to get all around your bed, depending on which side you sleep on. <coughs> you also want to make sure your bed height is comfortable to you. I had the pleasure of sleeping at my daughter's house last night on an air mattress. It was so low that I tried to get in, I rolled right off the other side. So a bed is very important so that when you come to your bed, you can just back in and lay down. It makes it much easier on your joints and your knees. And they have those ones now that are adjustable so that you can have them up and down and left and right. Closet, another often overlooked place. Again, closet doors, they're usually a small little door. Sometimes you have a bifold, which is great. Pocket doors are even better because again, they open all the way and you can walk in and see your whole closet, <coughs> even if it's only three feet wide. Shelf. I don't know about you, but all my shelves in my closet are up here and my poles are up here, so I always have a little stool in my, be in my bedroom so that I could get up and reach my clothes up top. So having adjustable shelves or lower or higher shelves and some places to put some other things makes it just a little bit easier for you to do. And you can buy those now at Home Depot. Your kitchen. After you sleep, you gotta eat. Can you get into your kitchen? Can you cook for yourself? So what are, again, some of the typical modifications in a kitchen? We look at slip-resistant flooring. Go back to the ceramic floor. We look at floors that have hardwood floors, but you don't want to put a high gloss finish on a hardwood floor. You don't want to get a glossy ceramic tile. Why? For two reasons. One, it's slippable, and two, when the light comes in, it sometimes it gives off a glare, and you can hardly see where you're going to maneuver around your kitchen. You want a floor that's smooth and level to help you with balance. As I talked to you before, this is vinyl tile. Looks just like a beautiful wood floor, but it's a little bit more cushiony, and it's easy to install. That's also a vinyl floor. Looks like a beautiful granite kitchen floor, but it's not. It's tile. It's vinyl tile. Cork is another floor that we use and helps a little bit with resiliency because if you fall or you drop something, you don't break as much. 